Hi friends, welcome here. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. And if you've been following along with this channel, you probably know that I recently relocated to Joshua Tree, California after traveling full time for about 18 months. So Joshua Tree is primarily known for the national park that's here, Joshua Tree National Park. It's big, beautiful. It's the main attraction to the town of Joshua Tree. Millions of people come visit every year. However, after living here for like six weeks or so, I've started to discover other things that are charming and interesting and great about the town of Joshua Tree that are not the national park. So if you visit the town of Joshua Tree, like definitely go to the national park. And maybe I'll do a whole video about like the hikes and the climbing and like the things not to miss in the national park. But for today, I want to share some of the other things to do in the town of Joshua Tree that are not the national park that are fun and interesting and just great places to check out. All right, let's get started. So the town of Joshua Tree is not really known as a culinary destination. There's not a lot of restaurants here. There are definitely some good ones and definitely go check them out, but they're few and far between, which means during high season, they're very busy. You could wait a very, very long time. Somebody told me the other day they waited an hour and 45 minutes for a pizza at like the one local pizza place. So it can get really busy around here because there's so few restaurants, but there's a little hidden gem. If you go about 15 minutes outside of the town of Joshua Tree into Yucca Valley, there's a little place called Casa Market. This place is very unassuming. You would really never know it's there or that they serve the best burritos in town. So I'll put a link below to the actual location of where this is, but it looks like just a little market from the outside. And then if you walk in down the aisles and into the corner, there's like a little seating section and a window where you can order food. And I don't know why more people aren't talking about this place because the burritos are out of this world. Like I'm talking so good and six dollars. And it's a big burrito too. It's like substantial when you hold it in your hands. It's like, you know, a pound or something. It's an enormous burrito for six dollars and it's really, really, really good. And I am vegan and if you ask them to make the burrito vegan, they are more than happy to oblige. And it's absolutely delicious. I would definitely recommend driving a few minutes outside of the town of Joshua Tree to go get the best burrito around. So next up is the Joshua Tree Brewery. Brewery, Brewer, that's hard to say. Brewer, brewery, brewer. Rah, 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 rah. So next up is the Joshua Tree Brewery. So they've actually been around for a while. I think they started brewing in 2014 and they're a great brewery. They use all local ingredients and they really try and minimize their water waste. So the way they produce their beer is great, but Recently, they've been trying to open an actual like tap room where people can go and hang out and drink beer. They've had some problems, I think, with some permitting through the county of San Bernardino. I think it's a long and complicated story, but they haven't been able to open their doors yet. But a little known secret is every Friday night at 4 p.m., the county of San Bernardino has allowed them to serve beer to the public outside on their patio and it's only for four hours and it's only the one day a week on friday so it's a pretty like low-key casual scene they just have like some lights up they give you a wristband on the way in and the beers are pretty cheap there was a saison i think murphy got for like five dollars or something like that and it's like good local beer if you're in the area i definitely recommend going to check out that brewery hopefully someday they get all the permitting they need and they can open their actual tap room and have longer hours but for now Friday nights, 4 p.m., check out the brewery. So next up is a place called Section 6, which is also known as the Desert View Conservation Area. So the National Park is a great place to experience the outdoors in Joshua Tree, right? There's beautiful rock formations, there's the Joshua Trees everywhere. However, a couple things about the National Park. First, they don't allow dogs, and we have a dog. She's pretty sleepy right now. Can you hear her snoring? Secondly, there's an entrance fee, and I'm more than happy to pay the entrance fee. We actually have a couple annual passes to the national parks. Love to support the national parks. However, I know that can be cost prohibitive for some people. And third, it's quite a bit of a drive to get into the national park and to some of the hiking trails. The park is enormous. So even though we live in like the downtown of Joshua Tree, it can take up to a half an hour to get to some of the places that we wanna go. And that's not even, if I were to drive to the other side of the park, it would take like a couple hours. So you don't always really have the time in your day to go into the park to experience the outdoors. And this is why section six is amazing. So section six is closer to town. It's about a 10 minute drive from where we are. They allow dogs on a leash and it's all public land. So anybody can access it. I will say that it is gated at dusk. 
So you do need to be out by the time the sun goes down. And if you're looking to see a lot of the like really cool rock formations in the Joshua trees, you don't really get that in section six. There are a few Joshua trees here and there, and there are some rock formations. They're definitely like not as unique and interesting as some of the ones in the actual park, but you do get a sense of like what the area looks like. But perhaps one of the greatest things is that there are not a lot of people out in section six. During high season, the park can get quite crowded. You might even have to wait in line to go through the gates. There can be a lot of people on the hiking trails and a lot of people out climbing, but up in section six, not a lot of people know about it. It's mostly just locals walking their dogs. So it's a great alternative to the national park. All right, next up is a yoga studio called Cedar and Sage. So a part of my life that I haven't really talked about much on this channel is that prior to starting traveling, I owned a yoga studio and I've been a yoga teacher for about eight years. So yoga is a pretty big part of my life and it was important to me to reintegrate a studio and a practice into my life when I stopped traveling and moved to Joshua Tree. So there are not a lot of options around here and I will honestly admit that my standards are pretty high. I've been practicing for a long time. I expect a lot from a yoga teacher and a yoga class. So I felt like it was gonna be a struggle for me to find a place where I could be happy. So I tried a couple other studios prior to finding Cedar and Sage, one being Instant Karma, which is like right in the downtown of Joshua Tree. And I think it's the one that every visitor goes to. It's the one that like, pops up on every Google search. And that is a great studio and, you know, definitely check that one out. But I will say that Cedar and Sage is by far the best studio around. There's a really high caliber of teaching there. It's quality teaching. The teachers know what they're doing. It's safe. It's fun. And there's also just a really good community. It's the type of place where you go there once and everybody learns your name. They say hello to you. They do a community hike together every Tuesday around some of the local hiking trails. It just is a really great space. In addition, I feel like when you're looking for a yoga studio, there's this kind of hard to describe feeling that you want when you walk into the door, right? You want to make sure that when you are in the space, it's a place where you feel like you can unwind and breathe and be and practice. And not every space has that. A lot of studios don't have that right kind of vibe to them, but this place definitely does. You walk in the door and at least for me, like it matches the energy that I want in a yoga studio. Again, this place is a little bit outside the town of Joshua Tree. It's actually in Yucca Valley. It takes me about 15 minutes to drive there from the downtown of Joshua Tree. So a little off the beaten path, but well worth it if you're looking to do yoga while you're here. So next up is a store called Acme 5, and it's actually across the street from the yoga studio I was just talking about. So they describe themselves as a lifestyle store, and I think what that means is they just have like a bunch of different kinds of things. So there's like furniture there, there's home decor, there's clothing, there's jewelry, there's like, there's just a little bit of everything but the style in there just like matches my modern desert dreams. I literally just want to buy everything and decorate my entire house from there. Oh, speaking of which, did you notice there's new additions? I'm not in an empty room anymore. So over here, we have a closet that houses all of our outdoor gear and climbing stuff and a couch and a light. And this pillow I actually got from Acme 5 and it's ethically made, it's plant dyed, it's like this beautiful soft pillow, I'm completely in love with it. And they do have quite a bit of a selection of ethically made things. Just overall, if you are looking for the things from your desert dreams, check out Acme 5. All right, the next three things on the list are all food related. So the first up is the Joshua Tree Health Food Store. And this is actually the only grocery store in the town of Joshua Tree proper. There are like larger supermarket stores in Yucca Valley and in 29 Palms, which are the towns on either side of Joshua Tree. But this is the only one that's in the actual town of Joshua Tree. I really like this place. It does tend to be a little bit on the pricey side just because it is sort of a smaller chain grocery store, but they have a lot of bulk food options, which tend to be more affordable. And they have a lot of bulk spices. The things that are going to be a little bit more expensive here tend to be like the packaged goods but we buy all of our bulk foods from the health food store and a lot of the produce too i will say they have a very small selection of produce but it's mostly organic and all locally sourced and it is very good and that kind of leads me into the next one which is the joshua tree farmers market so i definitely can't get all the produce that i need from the joshua tree health food store there's just 
not enough. So the farmer's market is a good way to supplement whatever I can get from the grocery store. And this farmer's market is top notch. So the market runs every Saturday from 8 to 1 p.m. I believe and it's right in the downtown of Joshua Tree if you could even call it a downtown. It's where like Highway 62 meets Park Boulevard and Park Boulevard is like where you go up into the national park. So it's like right at the epicenter of Joshua Tree. It's fairly small but very quality. Like all of the produce there is really good. Like most farmers markets it's all from local farms. A lot of them use sustainable farming practices and the farmers are all really outgoing and very nice and they're really transparent about their farming practices if you want to talk to them. So one of the things I found in talking to some of the local farmers is that it's actually really hard for a small farm to get organically certified by the USDA to get like that actual stamp on there. It can be really cross prohibitive for some of the smaller farms. So even though a lot of them are not USDA organically certified, they will talk to you about what their spraying practices are and like how they raise their foods in a way that is organic but doesn't necessarily comply with all of the USDA organic certification standards. So long story short, even if you go to the farmer's market and you feel like there's not a lot of organic produce, just talk to the farmer and they may tell you that like, yes, they do follow all of these practices and they don't use these pesticides, they just are not organically certified by the USDA. So the farmers are more than happy to talk to you about that stuff at this market. And I like that there's a mix of produce and like local artisans as well. There's pottery, there's also like jewelry and soaps and all sorts of different things. Like it's just a fun experience. Definitely check it out. My one tip if you are going to go is to try and maybe walk or bike or don't take your car because parking is really difficult. The farmer's market is actually in a parking lot and that parking lot is the only parking around. So you end up having to park in the street. It's just like total chaos down there when you bring your car down. So leave your car at home or your Airbnb if you're staying here. Try and walk if you can because it's like bananas. All right, last up is the Joshua Tree Coffee Roasters. So I don't drink coffee. So why is this on the list? Well, my husband drinks coffee and we buy it from the Joshua Tree Coffee Roaster. And I like them because they're just a great local business that I am more than happy to give my money to, to support. So all of their coffee is roasted by hand locally here in Joshua Tree. Their coffee is organic, it's fair trade, it's Rainforest Alliance certified. Like they're just doing great work and producing a great product. It's the kind of company that is just thoughtful about what they're doing. They use a lot of solar power to produce their coffee. They're thoughtful about the environment and they wanna produce a quality product and they really care about the product and it's good. So I hear, it smells really good. It makes our kitchen smell really good when my husband's making a cup of coffee. So if you're gonna get some coffee while you're here in Joshua Tree, I would definitely recommend supporting the Joshua Tree Coffee Company. So anyways, that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful if you're planning on visiting Joshua Tree or if maybe you live here or live nearby. I hope you check out some of the places on the list because this place is beautiful and the National Park is beautiful, but this community is a lot more than just the National Park. Thank you so much for watching. I put out new videos every week, so make sure you subscribe down below and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Oh, look who's awake for the end of the video. Where'd she go? She's like, I heard the video was ending and I didn't get to say anything. Come here, come here. All right, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe down below and give this video one paw up if you liked it. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye friends. Go puppy. And how do I want to start this video? So, so, so uh, 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 what I'm trying to say. Have blah, 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 blah. almost. Oh. Did, blah. So the town. Oops, that was a New England accent right there. Close to the town. Close to. Where is this New England accent coming from? I moved out of New England and suddenly I'm dropping my R's. It's close to the town.